almost a 700 point recovery from the lows of the day. But like we promised you, we have the management of Rishab Instruments. Uh, it's been a soft photo for the company this time around. What's actually happened is that margins have been significantly lower. So the first question for you, sir, is that uh, what happened in Q3? Why has, the, why has there been a significant softness in margins, both on a year-on-year -year as well as on a sequential basis? Good afternoon and uh, thanks for having me here and giving us an opportunity to talk about what's going around. Uh, so if you look at the annualized uh, uh, results, uh, we are uh, on the top line 30% up. And uh, as of end of uh, quarter two, our adjusted EBITDAs were around 20%, which have dropped down to about 60%. So quarter three, there has been a stress on our margins and we know the reasons uh, where they are coming from and what we're doing on those. So basically, 40% of our business is on uh, 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 aluminum die casting in, uh, in Europe. And uh, recently, uh, in the automotive segment of that, which is about, again, 55% of uh, that particular uh, segment of the business, where we launched uh, about uh, half a dozen uh, uh, very complex and uh, new challenging, uh, very futuristic projects there. These are uh, the projects which uh, the industry is doing for the first time. And we are happy to be part of uh, that whole uh, uh, game. Uh, with our uh, customers, there's a lot of learning curve which is going on. So stabilization of those projects and processes is going to take about, you know, anywhere between six to nine months. So to that extent, those uh, those are uh, uh, stressed. Um, uh, but right. also we have these contracts which are uh, very futuristic. These are uh, going to be high entry barriers for others to enter into this segment. And uh, these are contracts which are uh, having a timeline of uh, supplies from anywhere between four to eight uh, years. Okay. This is one. And second one is uh, also about the solar. We were talking about solar where we are the first company and Mr. the only company. Um Mr. Musalikar, apologies for interrupting. A couple of reasons what has led to this margin disappointment. Can you give us a sense of what growth is looking like in quarter four so far? And what are you guiding for in FY25 in terms of top line and profit growth? Yeah. So uh, uh, let me complete uh, the two reasons which I was uh, quoting. One was on the aluminum die casting. The other side was... Uh, our solar business, so which uh, uh, was contributing about one to two percent of our uh, revenue. So last quarter it was about six seven percent uh, of our uh, quarterly revenue. But uh, this is at a primitive stage where the gross margins are uh, much lower compared to our other uh, products. So we see thirty percent top line uh, growth happening uh, if you compare uh, quarter by quarter or uh, even uh, uh, annualized basis. So we'll continue to have that growth. So as we committed uh, at the beginning of uh, uh, our IPO, so we'll be uh, closing the year with uh, 20 to 25% of uh, top line growth and 18% uh, adjusted EBITDA. So generally quarter uh, four and quarter two are uh, stronger compared to the other quarters. So uh, so far uh, uh, in by end of uh, this year, this is what it looks and we'll, uh, we'll continue to have the tempo going ahead in uh, uh, next year, next financial year as well. So just another question. So you're saying that uh, as far as the top line growth is concerned, 20 to 25% growth guidance on the top line continues to remain as is. 18% EBITDA margin guidance re is retained. What is the guidance that you're going for FY25? And where do you see operating leverage play out, especially when you're talking about, you know, uh, the Lumel or the Alucas business that uh, has been ramping up quite significantly? Yeah. So for next financial year also, we have uh, similar uh, top line uh, guidances like 20 to 25%, which we've been talking and we, we will have this 18% uh, EBITDA, adjusted EBITDA as a margin guideline, which is uh, going to go forward. And uh, we have got, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a mix of things which is happening. At one side, we are getting, uh, uh, you know, leverages of uh, higher volume. On the other side, we are also kind of reinvesting, you can say, to do uh, more challenging projects, which will be for the future. So it's a mix of uh, the two. And EMS business uh, in electronics is also uh, attributing uh, more and more. Uh, which also is a low margin, but these have got better numbers when it comes to ROI once they reach some uh, volumes. So two businesses, Solar and EMS, will uh, give uh, more uh, at the bottom line because of the volumes. Uh, they may not be big gross margin numbers, but the other uh, businesses which we have in uh, electronics is, is, is uh, really doing good. So we see the same uh, uh, perspective going forward in next financial year. Well, thank you so much for your time uh, here on CNBC TV 18. We wish you all the best. Uh, the stock still sulking in today's trading session. But, you know, that's all we have time on on this edition of Midcap Radar, Mutual Fund Corner, when we return.